So we're here at Fully Charged Outside and we've been asking lots of EV drivers for hints and tips they'd like to share. Let's find out. The average UK driver is only about 30 miles a day and it's similar to for many other countries. Most EVs now, even used ones, you'll get 80 to 90 miles before you need to charge. Most modern EVs, you're talking 150 to 250, even 300 miles between charges. The best bit of advice we would give to anyone in those early days is take it easy, don't rush to get there, break up your journey and it will be much more enjoyable. I would say to people that are worried about range anxiety, don't. The charging system is superb. 30 minutes, I can have a full charge and I can do another 250 miles. You have one card, you go along, you tap the card and you're away. When I upgraded to something a bit more contemporary, I went for the shortest range Nissan Leaf that was on the market and I fully anticipated that being my daily commute and then I would have my hybrids that I had for long journeys. The hybrid actually ended up seizing up on the driveway because even the short range electric car with all the rapid charging infrastructure that there is was more than capable of doing the distance. So that went from Edinburgh as far south as Leeds and as far north as the Isle of Skye and there are much further travelled ones than mine. Yeah, so I think there are definitely, uh, there's a need for planning and being careful. So if the car is telling you it's got 100 miles left, you want to reduce that a bit and say you've got 70 miles left always give yourself a bit of a buffer. When you're looking for chargers, always have a backup plan. The key thing is to always charge while you're doing something. So we charge when we're at the supermarket or we're at the gym, and it doesn't feel like an inconvenience. It feels like we're just parking the car and plugging in. If people actually you know, zero the counter and say, well, we're gonna go out to the shop, zero the counter and see on a day-to-day -day how many miles they do, I think they'll be surprised. The other advantages come streaming in. Home charging is like having a petrol station at home, which people don't really think of. If you have a driveway, I would suggest you try and take advantage of the government scheme that's out there to get your charger installed, and then you can link that with the packages from the electricity providers. If you don't have a driveway, there's funding available from Office for Zero Emission Vehicles for your local authority to put in a charge point outside your house on the street. It's so simple. Every day, I can, if I so wish, or need to, I can start every day with full charge. I think one of the things that is misunderstood by people is that you have to keep it charged at 100% all the time. It's not the case. In fact, it's better for your battery to keep it between 10 and 80% and you just charge up as and when. We charge at home once or twice a week for our two cars. The cost is much, much lower. I can plug it in at 12.30 at night, 4.30, I get 5p a unit, which means I'm talking, you know, £1.50 for a 160 mile journey. Probably the thing we wish we'd known really is about the charging standards. That's the one thing to research, because the original Zoe was AC rapid charging, which is kind of being phased out now. And you know, now you've got the standard, which is CCS, and you just really look about how the car will suit you and look at what charges are in your area to make sure they support the charging standard you go for. I would suggest that people look at some of the good websites out there. They look at ZapMap, they look at PlugShare, um, they look at a better route planner and also they look at what their local council's information is because all of them have good information about EV charging in the local area. What we're going to see with electric vehicles is the sustainability improving even more and the price coming down even more because battery tech is nowhere near its final form. So there's some very interesting new chemistries coming out which are very cheap, made with very abundant materials, easy to recycle. This is improving and improving and improving. The, the technology's moved on so much, not in respect, not just in respect of you know, battery power, but also you know, CarPlay or Android Auto, all these sort of things. You can just talk to your car and tell it to start playing the music rather than fiddling around and trying to find it. With freeing up the interior of the car, it means that you won't have so much trouble adapting a vehicle for either a disabled passenger or for disabled drivers. And of course, no gears, completely seamlessly automatic, means driving's easier, the controls can be all in the hands, practically. 
an electric car, there isn't a necessity to do a minimum of 40 miles to warm up the engine. I come out each day, the car's full, ready to go. There's no obviously exhaust parts, there's no timing chains, the reliability of it, even brakes, tyres and also the, your brake discs and pads, they don't wear out the same as a traditional vehicle. Think of a computer and they've had a car built around it. Anything wrong with that car is put right overnight while you're asleep and downloaded into your car. It's tomorrow. Please go ahead, do it now. Do not wait until everyone's gone EV because you'll miss out on all the advantages of buying one early. Definitely talk to the local groups because not only can they tell you this is a good charger, but they can tell you this is a good installer locally and they can tell you these charges are really good or goes Tesco. Local knowledge is amazing. Speak to electric vehicle owners groups, people who've been through all this before, who can give you real world advice. They will give you the honest answers about the various makes and models. The best people to ask about this are the people who've been driving them for years. It's a very friendly community and people are often at charge points and, and want to chat and ask questions. The beauty of YouTube and uh, Twitter, there's lots of people out there. The EV community is very informative and very generous with their knowledge. If you really want to do some research, there's plenty of resources, information on YouTube and the rest of the web. And then I would suggest that people look for garages that are um, part of the EV approved scheme. And that's dealers who basically have expertise in electric vehicles and can give people the opportunity to do test drives and also talk people through more the implications of, of trying an EV. The other thing is that just enjoy, enjoy the journey because uh, researching electric cars itself is really exciting, it's really fun. For the first time we've got this new technology, new way of driving, new way of filling up the car and I think that's really what's brought me into EVs even more, is learning about them and there's always something new to figure out. So the drive for electric vehicles now, the, the increase in demand we're seeing, initially it was legislation, there were some decent incentives available, but now it's genuine word of mouth. People who bought EVs, the early adopters, have, you know, they've given their friends and family a lift in it, they have been bowled over straight away, they've bought some, they've told their friends and family, and we've seen this year at Fully Charged Live, you know, we've taken over an airport for goodness sake, because there's that many people who are interested in EVs and have EVs. Go out and try one, go into a test drive, and I, I, I reckon just that is enough to really get people thinking and there are so many uh, advantages to driving an electric car. For us it was the first new car we'd bought ever. The, the cost debt benefits of actually having a new car and the, like the, the monthly running cost, the tax or the, uh, and so on, it, it all made sense for us in the end. So the experience is, is, is brilliant and um, we definitely wouldn't go back to the, the old way. For disabled people it, it's no different to owning another car except that the possibilities for internal space, for ease of driving and smoothness of driving. It's an eye-opener actually, I wasn't expecting it. But I think the independence with the solar panels and with the home charger, that's a nice feeling too. Eight years and three EVs further down the line and that's it, I will never go back to driving a fossil fuel car. EVs are now everyday cars. Yeah, you know, when you think this car can go from John O'Groats to Land's End using just one charge stop for 40 odd minutes, you know, they're just normal cars now. There's no reason to be afraid of an electric vehicle. Just get in and drive them. So there's so many great insights from the EV community. So much passion for sharing their expertise. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs>